Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about AWS Device Farm Testing. The purpose is to understand if it's going to be feasible to use the offering for enterprise customers. A lot of life science customers have uh, are heavily invested in iPads for uh, the field uh, as a device and they often run multiple applications. So what would be cool is that if you can actually run these test cases in the cloud rather than have uh, somebody manually have, uh, type away at a physical device. So what I do is we can upload an IPA file, which is a binary distribution file for over there, and then uh, run a session. Okay, so if we go back to the first screen of the AWS console, uh, here it is. So more or less, you can go for services, uh, uh, device farm. I've already previously set up a project here, so I'm going to drill down to it. So these are the automated test cases I ran before. Uh, I didn't actually spend any time writing a test case. I just chose fuzz, which is about in type of testing that Amazon provides. It's just random like screen clicks. So what's neat about AWS uh, device farm is you can get these remote access uh, sessions. So I requested a session earlier and it actually takes a while for a session to become available. This depends on the availability of uh, devices. So for example, here, this is my session. This is actually connecting to an, a physical AirPad Air 2. And you can also do things like certain, uh, certain things like swipe and so forth. It's not very sensitive, but uh, let's see if it works or not. Oh, so I only have one screen of apps, so I can't really swipe. But let's say I want to uh, go into find my iPhone. So it does that. And then the home button's down here. So it's very similar to your simulator, but except for it's running actually on a physical device uh, using a .ipa file. Okay, so sometimes it takes a couple clicks. So let's say if we want to actually go swipe here, we should actually navigate to the screen on the right. So in this case, you need to go back. Okay, so you can install applications here using the upload. So any .ipa file uh, you can upload. So pay close attention to this particular uh, notice here, which is sensitive information. So recommend that uh, you avoid providing uh, sensitive information like account info. So this actually is quite a uh, deterrent for using it for enterprise apps where you actually need to enter some info unless you have some throw rate credentials. So if you want to use this, what you need to do is set up some credentials, run your test case, and make sure that the credentials are uh, thrown away. And I'll tell you why. Okay. So if we go back to uh, the remote access here, so the previous test session, if you drill down into it, you can look at the files, and it provides you actually a UI log. So those with compliance teams uh, requesting the, the evidence of a test run, you can go here, and there's actually a video, so you click on it, and you can download it. I've already downloaded this, so I'm just going to open this here. And if you look at this, what's happening here is that this was the iPad that was provisioned for my previous test run, and it's actually in Japanese. So this means that it's actually reusing uh, an iPad that uh, some other customer is using. And if I just navigate here, Okay, so it looks like this one, this is not a native app. They're probably testing something called Story Pulse. So your app actually gets left on device unless you actually clean it up. Um, and then per Amazon, there's some caveat somewhere that says that uh, the app and your data will reside within the device for up to 400 days. So it's uncertain that uh, whether your app and your data will be destroyed. So in terms of what it uh, looks like, let's try to set up a new project. So create a new project. Let's say web demo. So you create these runs, and then you can uh, ask for a particular device. So let's see. Choose your app. It's going to be native one. Drop your file here. So you configure testing and select your particular devices. I won't get into all the details. Uh, I also want to cut touch base on what the architecture looks like. So I thought about searching for it, and there really aren't uh, isn't much information about what it actually looks like. And it's a lot of a bunch of basically um, you know visual types of diagrams. 
So I actually think that it looks more like a click farm. For those of you following the news, uh, some like uh, companies have set this up where they mimic uh, clicks right, to, to kind of uh, still add uh, revenue. So it's a bunch of devices basically that's going to be hooked up to some kind of um, border relay and then uh, so they're really physical devices. So I, I thought that was actually pretty neat. Um, so you can see like uh, right now with the device testing, it's definitely pretty cool. Um, you can do and connect to a real physical iPad. So this would be good for conditions where uh, you don't have that particular version of the iPad. So let's say you want to test your app against version uh, 9 of iOS, and you can here. Physically, if you want to do it, you either need to uh, do the simulator or, or have a device that has it, uh, that version installed. And I mean, there are some kind of caveats as well, uh, such as um, for your session, there's uh, time limits. So let's stop the session because I'm not using it anymore. Uh, so definitely feel free to test this out. It comes with, I think, um, about a thousand minutes uh, for free for you to uh, test it out. And then afterwards, it comes a paid offering. Okay, yeah, thanks for watching.